for that day of judgment. This is the judgment that was set forth for angels. Angels are spirit beings and spirits cannot die. So God is going to punish them with eternal damnation and everlasting fire. But Jesus is letting us know the men that have disobeyed him, they are also going to take part in this punishment. And how is that? Because what the Lord is going to do, he is simply going to raise them from the dead and kill them all over again. This is talking about a second death. He told him, he said, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Drop down to verse number 46 and go ahead. Because so again, we're going to find out that this punishment is an everlasting punishment. Because oftentimes people will say, Will God burn you forever? According to the word of Jesus, we're going to find out, yes, he will burn you forever. And it's simple. Because, see, we think of things in the physical, in the natural. And we look at, we think in, a fire, we, when we think in terms of fire, we think, well, something burns and it's consumed. But again, God will often show you an example of what he's talking about. When he appeared unto Moses, say, in the burning bushes, say, Moses, stood back so that he could see this sight because the bush was on fire. It was burning, but it was not consumed. God is an awesome God. He could have you burn, and you could burn forever and never be consumed. That punishment will always be there. Go ahead. Verse number 46. And what did Jesus say? And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, uh -huh. but the righteous into life eternal. He said these are going into what? An everlasting punishment. But the righteous until life eternal. See, nobody's saying until you've gotten into God's kingdom, you always have to be mindful. You can always be lost. You always have to be mindful that you have to do what is required of you. And what is required, we're going to plainly see, you got to be obedient to God's commandments and you got to remain steadfast all the way until the end. All the way until this death or the second coming of the Lord. Turn over to Mark, the ninth chapter, because you're going to either receive everlasting life or everlasting damnation, which is the lake of fire. But he said, now the ones on the right got into the kingdom. But before we see what constitutes you being righteous and what you have to do to get into God's kingdom, we're going to further examine this eternal punishment from the Lord. We're going to see what it consists of. Jesus warns us of it here. Mark 9 and pick it up at verse number 43. 9 and 43. Because he's going to let us know that we need to do whatever within our, within our power to make sure that we don't receive this judge, this punch, 9 and 43, and go ahead when you get there. And if thy hand offend thee, what? cut it off. You see how extreme Jesus is here? He said if your hand is offensive unto you, he said then you cut it off. Is he literally talking about you physically chopping off your hand? No, but he's letting you know the urgency of the matter. You got to be diligent. He said if your hand offend thee, cut it off. Why is that? It is better for thee to enter into life, man, uh -huh. than having two hands to go into hell. Go ahead. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. And the hell that he's talking about here, we want to see this is not talking about the grave. This is talking about the punishment beyond the grave. He said, if your hand offend you, then you cut it off, because it's better for thee to enter into life, man. Because God will make you whole again. He said, then having two hands go into hell, into the fire, he said, that will never be quenched. And what else is taking place? Where the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. So you are burning, and then you have worms that are eating on you. And this is eternal damnation. Go ahead. And in thy foot offend thee, what? cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life, uh -huh. than having two feet to, to be cast into hell. Go ahead. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. He's simply saying, whatever it is that's causing you, to go contrary to God. You got to sever that. You got to stop that. And what you have to sever is your thoughts that are contrary. 
Because your hand is not just arbitrarily doing something of its own. Your hand is not, you're not standing in a department store and all of a sudden your hand has a mind of its own and you slip something in your pocket. That's not the case. You're not laying in bed and all of a sudden you find yourself in a place where you had no business being. Talking about I'm wondering how I got here. Looking at your feet. No, what brought you there was a thought. You decided what you were going to do before you did. And even if you didn't give it much thought, even if it was something that was done on impulse, at the last minute, you should have gave it some consideration. Sometimes I look at the news and it, I just, it amazes me. People will do something in the spur of the moment that will impact them for the rest of their lives. There was a young woman, she decided I'm going to rob a bank. So that means now for the next 30 years, you are in jail. For what? Because you didn't think, even if the thought came into your mind, you should have told yourself, this is a dumb thought. This is real stupid. Real, real, real dumb. But because didn't give it any consideration and carried it out, those are the ramifications for that. But go ahead. Where well, the worm died not, and the fire is not quenched. Uh-huh. And if thine eye offend, thee pluck it up. Why? It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye. Uh-huh. Than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Go ahead. Where well, the worm died not, and the fire is not quenched. So the Lord is warning us, you don't want to come here and you do whatever is necessary. Whatever is within your power to make sure you do not end up in this lake of fire. This is God's ultimate punishment. This is everlasting damnation. And this is something we all need to be delivered from. Turn over to Luke, the 12th chapter. And to see that the hell that Jesus was warning us of is not the grave. Because we all got that death coming if we don't live until the second coming of the Lord. We've all sinned against God. And again, the wages of sin is death. But here Jesus lets us know that there's another death we need to be mindful of. And people that have the notion or the thought or the belief that they are saying give them no consideration as to what it is that awaits them. And if you don't understand that there's to be a judgment, it's like having a test and not knowing that you are to have a test you're not prepared for it. And if you're not prepared for it, chances are you are going not to pass it. And this test, nobody wants this grain. But go ahead, 12 and verse number 5. I'm sorry, thank you. Verse 4. What did Jesus say? And I say unto you, my friend, uh -huh. be not afraid of them that kill the body. Go ahead. And after that, have no more that they can do. Because he had told them, you got to endure to the end, did he not? He said, they're going to persecute you. They're going to condemn you. But you got to remain steadfast. And if you endure to the end, then you'll be saved. He said, I'm saying unto you, my friend. He said, don't be afraid of those that can kill the body. But after that, there's nothing else that they can do unto you. He said, don't be afraid of what man can do to you. Do not allow your fear of men to cause you to go contrary unto God. Do not allow peer pressure or the feelings of wanting to belong cause you to go contrary to what you know is right. Cause you to go contrary to your faith. Go ahead. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Go fear ahead. Him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Uh huh. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And the hell that he's talking about is eternal damnation. It's beyond the grave. It is the second death we're going to find out. He said, but I warn you who it is that you need to be afraid of. You need to fear God. He said, which after he has killed you. He's got the power to cast you into hell. In other words, he's going to kill you, raise you back from the dead, bring you back from the grave, and kill you all over again. But this death is totally different. 
the first death, the physical death, you cease to exist. Contrary to what a lot of these ministers tell people. All of you go to the grave. Solomon tells you, your thoughts, your feelings, your hatred, your love, it all perishes. It all goes back to from whence man came, back to the dust of the ground. But he's going to bring everybody back. Everybody's coming back from the dead. The thing is, are you going to be on the right hand? Or are you going to be on the left? Are you going to be in the kingdom? Or are you going to be in the lake of fire? And that's what we have to contend with. That's why our responsibility comes in, to make sure we end up on the right hand, to make sure we do what's necessary to get into God's kingdom. But turn over to Luke, the 16th chapter. He said, you fear the one who can punish you with everlasting punishment, everlasting damnation. And to show that it is everlasting, Jesus gave us this parable here. Luke 16. And pick it up at verse number 19. You go ahead when you get there. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Uh -huh. And fared sumptuously every day. He had a good life. Go ahead. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, mm -hmm. which was laid at his gate full of sores. He struck. Go ahead. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. He said he was just he was he was just satisfied having the crumbs from the rich man's table. But go ahead. And it, what happened? And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Uh huh. The rich man also died and was buried. He said, "Now what took place was to say both of them died." He said, "But the beggar died and he was carried by an angel." Well, he said into Abraham's bosom. He said, a rich man also died and was buried. Abraham is dead. And what this is reflecting is, what this is showing is, this is taking place after the resurrection, after the resurrection has occurred. So the beggar was taken and put in the presence of Abraham. We know that Abraham is going to be in the God's kingdom. He is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it said the rich man also died. And he was buried. And what did he do? Go ahead. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. He's conscious now. We know that this is talking not about the grave. This is talking about beyond. When he was talking about him dying and being buried, God has killed him a second time. He said, and in hell he not lift up his eyes, being in torment, because he is in the lake of fire, where it is burning. And where the worms are eating on him. What does he do? And see if Abraham will fall. Go ahead. And Lazarus in his bosom. And what did he do? And he cried and said, Father Abraham, uh -huh. have mercy on me. Why? And said Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Because where is the rich man? Go ahead. And cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He is burning in the lake of fire. And he is conscious. He calls it a death. But again, this death is different from the physical death. He is conscious of his torment. He called and said, Father Abraham, have mercy. And sent Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. He said, because I'm tormented in this flame. But what did Abraham tell him? Go ahead. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good thing. Uh -huh. And likewise, Lazarus, evil thing. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And, but don't for a minute think that he is in the fire because of his wealth. He was not in the fire because of his wealth. No more so than Lazarus was in the kingdom because of his problems. They received the judgments they received because of the deeds that they had done during that lifetime. It was what the rich man had done, and Jesus didn't emphasize that here. What he's showing us here is that this is an everlasting punishment. But we're going to find out how the rich man ended up in the lake of fire as well as how Lazarus ended up in the kingdom because that's the most important thing. We all have a part or we all have responsibility when it comes to our deliverance. He told Abraham, Abraham told him as he cried unto Abraham for mercy. He said, son, 